What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I was talking about using the ES9 and Ableton as my mixer for my Eurorack system. I showed you how to set it all up and then uh, control it with the uh, Launch Control XL. One thing I talked about was that like I was traveling internationally and I basically wanted to take the smallest setup possible. Um, and so this is it. This has been super fun. Um, one thing I did mention was that I might add some clips inside of Ableton that I could play along with the Eurorack. And I did go ahead and do that. I didn't quite do it the way I thought that I was going to do it. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to just show you um, what I've got going on. And so that's what this video is all about. We're going to talk about how I'm using my Eurorack and Ableton to work together to try and get me a longer set um, and make me able to play some of the songs that I've already written. Um, and then also just give myself um, a little bit of extra time to, to breathe and make sure that everything on the Eurorack set is ready to go. So yeah, we're just going to keep going because the video's already going. We don't need to dive in anything. We're just, we're already doing it. Um, all right, so as you can see here, I still have my eight tracks. These are all grouped the way um, that I had them. If you haven't seen my last video, I'll put a link up to it in this video and in the description. And then what I did is I made eight more tracks and then I grouped those. And then I just took stems from others from these songs that I have um, that I've already written and already like recorded and stuff. And I stemmed those out into, into these clips. And so you'll notice that I have a bunch of scenes here and then these pink guys, these are, these are blank. So this just means when I get to this one and trigger it, it's just going to be blank. The whole, the whole loop's just going to be off. If I go crossfade to this while, um, while I'm playing, nothing's going to happen. And that just helps me know where all of my songs are. And then on this group, I don't know if I already said this, I'm going to say it again if I did. I've got the group assigned to B, and then all the tracks are assigned to A. The reason I didn't group uh, the Eurorack tracks is because I didn't want to have that extra fader that confuses me with the Launch Control XL. I just wanted to make sure that when I'm all the way to the left, I'm on all eight of these faders, because these are the ones that matter for me. And then over here on the right side, like I said, these are stems. And what I did is I bounced the whole track out into eight stems, and then I went through and cut each section up to be like eight bars or 16 bar sections, and then threw those into Ableton. It actually takes way less time than you think it would. Um, just uh, cut them all up, and then in that section that you're working in, select everything, drag them into uh, this arrangement view, and then select all, copy, open your other, um, open the one that you're working on, this project, and just uh, find the clip you want to start on and press uh, you know, paste, and then it'll paste all of them perfectly for you. So it actually works pretty well. And then over here, what I ended up doing was assigning follow actions. So when I, when I said I was going to do clips, like what I had hoped was to maybe just do like some extra things on there. But since I wasn't bringing my black box with me that I usually use for this um, style of um, use case, I decided that I just wanted to do this and I didn't make enough time to really do anything super fancy. And that's why it's cool. It just, it worked well. I'm probably going to work on this and make it a little more fancy, but um, we're just going to keep going right now. So real quick tip, if you hit your um, master here and then click on, double click on the master channel and then double click there, I guess you just need to select the master and then double click on your scenes. Um, you've got follow actions down here. As long as all the clips are the same uh, length, you can basically just say, I want it to be eight bars and then go to the next thing. Um, so that is super handy. And most of my songs are in eight or 16 bar chunks. So it was really easy to just assign all of those. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm playing here and then I have a knob assigned to my crossfader down here. And I basically just DJ from this setup over to this track that's being played. So I definitely could have just put out, you know, like the stems in just one track. I also could have just not even done stems, right? Um, so I did stems because I wanted to be able to adjust, fine tune anything that I heard while I was there. Um, you know, maybe go into a clip and adjust it if I need to. The mastering is all gone. You know, some of the effects are printed, but a lot of the the heavy lifting that these, you know, in these productions are are gone. So 
these are more raw tracks. They were all recorded with my synthesizers in here and my mod modular synth, so they're gonna sound super similar to what's happening in here. And then why I didn't just do one super long thing of stems um, was because I wanted to be able to have a safety net of like, let's say I can't find a voice in here in my headphones while I'm queuing it up, or um, I have to play an extra long amount of time, which at this set I actually did have to do that. Um, I can just trigger this clip again. So I've got these set to go up and down, like I talked about in the last video, and then this guy's play. So if I do need to just play something again, I can just go find the one that I'm on and press play. It's not super convenient for the, for the uh, laptop closed thing. I did not have this in Bristol, so I just put this under the... I didn't have this screen that I'm going to tell you about in a second, but I just took the computer and I put it under the table and then when I needed to look, I just looked. It was a little distracting. I know it's distracting for the crowd, but you know, we're all learning. I did buy this thing on Amazon. This is a five inch HDMI screen. Um, I'm super excited to get that to work because I'm just gonna put it right there. Oh my gosh, it fits right on top of my DI box. Um, and then, you know, just be able to monitor the clips from that. So that's a future plan. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, if I were going further on this, um, I'd probably start working on assigning some knobs in my user mode to like control filters, like maybe master filters of this section and master filter of this group. I don't know how I'm going to uh, get these without grouping them. I guess I just put one on each one or just suck it up and, and group them. But then over here, you know, like that's the only thing I didn't really do. So I the way I'm transitioning is just like taking the kick drum out, filtering up the whole master mix a little bit, coming back in. So I'm just going to show you what I mean real quick, and we're going to play a little thing. I'm going to show you how I started my set, and then uh, go into the next thing. So basically, when I started, um, it was kind of an ambient vibe before me, so we let him wash out. We let some people, you know, breathe a second and know that that set was over. And then I just started mine like this, I believe. We should be able to hear it. But my crossfader's all the way over, so there we go. All right. And then we're just gonna do a real quick uh, like run through of this song, so like. And then we're just gonna bring everything in, because why not? One, two, three, four. Then we just kind of like wash it out. Let me bring the bass in. All right, so this is how I started the set. And we just groove this for a while. You can bring in other voices, right? Got some muted voices in here. All right, so let's just say we're at the end of the track now. So what I would take, what I would usually do is probably mute this lead again. Probably go back to the kick or take the bass out. That's pretty good. Probably filter out this main chord a little bit. There we go. So then I would go through here, find that piece, start it, and then start slowly transitioning. Maybe take the kick out here. And then my kick drum is not in on this guy. Oh, because I made that one 16 and I totally forgot. So here it comes. And then this is the next song. So I messed that transition up, but I promise you I didn't do it at the show. <laughs> Sorry, keep it in the mic. <laughs> All right, so now this is playing, right? It's just going, going clip by clip, right? So now I have time to go over here and check or just change everything. So I'm gonna go to bank two on my assimilator. I'm gonna turn all my faders down because they don't matter. They're only on the Eurorack channels. And then I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna say I wanna load uh, number two, 
And I'm gonna wait to do that on the beat, make sure that I know that it's right on the phrase. Maybe do a little filter sweep for the crowd. Two, three, go. All right, so this track's playing now. And now all I really gotta do is over here is start cueing. And I can't really do that in these headphones, so I'm just gonna set these ones down for a sec and then um, and cue. And then by the time I get it queued up, hopefully it'll be time to uh, make that transition back to the mod modular. still just kind of getting over this little bug in my throat so I apologize so yeah this this track's been playing I queued it up we're just gonna skip to the end instead of using the controller I'm just gonna use a mouse because I'm sitting down and whatever so here we go this is the end of the track kind of set it up for a mix out right So that's it. So yeah, that's how I'm mixing back and forth between a track on Ableton and a track in the modular. At first, I felt really weird about doing this. And I still do sometimes. I still feel like, oh man, this is cheating. Um, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. And then I start thinking about like what this is really about. And it's really about like the music and having a good time and like, I really want to play some of the tracks that like I've been working hard on, like really hard on. I said hard on twice. Um, but in here, you know, in my studio, like with all of my tools, not just the modular, like with everything. And a lot of times when I go out, I don't feel like I can do that um, or play out. And a lot of times when I play out, I'm, I feel like I'm forced to come up with a new set every time. And like, while that is like, can be inspiring when I'm in that right mood to do that. Sometimes it's really exhausting. Um, and it's like way too much pressure for me. Um, now when I play techno, especially like when I play techno with Traversi, I'm all about improvising the whole thing. Like I am like, that's super fun. We're working out ways we're doing some recording. So we're working out some ways to maybe play some of our recorded tracks as well. But like, man, when we play, we can do an hour and a half together improvised no problem but when i'm by myself trying to play not techno not random hypnotic random sequences hypnotic techno i'm trying to make like super musical deep house music um and like i can do that on a modular but it's only so fun and i really do enjoy producing some tracks and so i've just had to give my free myself the freedom to do this and like to be honest like it has been super rewarding to be on a stage and like mix into one of these songs and get to hear it on a big system sound just as big and just as good as what I'm playing in here. 
and also have this sound just as big and just as good as what I'm playing in there. My Eurorack setup doesn't sound any worse than my Ableton setup. And I think that that is like a huge win. Um, and so, yeah, like it might be cheating a little bit. I get it. But at the same time, like we can call this a hybrid set if you really want to, because I've got a computer on the stage. Um, you know, to me, I feel like the computer is just another piece of hardware. It does a lot. I get it. Um, but like, as far as like taking our influence from DJs, right. And like the thing about DJing that's so rad right now is just being able to show up with a USB and just like play on the system. You can play tracks you wrote that day, that night, you know, like that is, that's awesome. Um, the flexibility is just so huge and it's just made running shows like so much easier for crews, for artists. It's made it like so much better on everyone's backs and mental health. And we can all focus on like making a really good show for the audience. And as a person who really like is just like stuck on the fact that he likes to play instruments, um, I do take a lot of influence from my time DJing and from, from DJs and my music is historically performed by DJs. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with, you know, DJing between my live setup and some tracks that I'm super proud of. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was inspiring. Um, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to mix out of the song that we were playing and I'm going to mix into this other song that I really just want to play. It's unreleased, but I really want to hear it right now. So I figure you might want to hear it as well. So thank you so much for watching. As always, please like, and subscribe. We'll see y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>
like this song, man. You. <laughs> All right, now it's time to start like getting into loading some other things, right? One, two, three, go. All right, so that just loaded. You can't hear it. That's the best part. I'm not gonna cue it. I don't really know what this song sounds like right now because I haven't played in a while. But you're gonna just watch me train wreck and then this is the end of the video. Thank you. 